so I, I'm going to talk about inflammation uh, today. I guess uh, last Friday I was in Paris giving the American lecture at the French meeting, and I talked about uh, acute coronary syndromes. But I thought here I would talk about sort of this, this uh, long trajectory uh, from being in the basic science lab through to a large-scale clinical trials uh, to really try to convince people that inflammation was important in atherosclerosis. So my view of atherosclerosis is that inflammation is involved not only in the inception of the lesion, but also during the long clinically silent or stable phase of progression and up to and including the thrombotic complications that bring the patients to our attention as clinicians most dramatically. Now we focused for decades on the so-called vulnerable plaque, the thin cap fibrous atheroma. And we spent uh, many, many years in my laboratory, several decades, picking apart the cellular and molecular biology of plaque rupture. This slide summarizes a lot of that work. And it tells the story that when we have those T cells in the lesion, that they can secrete a pro-inflammatory cytokine known as interferon gamma that actually puts a break on the ability of those smooth muscle cells to manufacture new collagen that is required to repair and maintain all important fibrous cap. I've also had a great privilege of working with my former uh, postdoc, Phil Swirsky, and uh, his research partner, Matthias Narendorf, in uh, trying to fill out the cardiovascular continuum that uh, Dr. Bromwald formulated with Victor Zhao about 30 years ago. And this is the expanded or revisited cardiovascular continuum where we include the central nervous system signaling between the central nervous system and the bone marrow and stimulating leukocytes, which can then go back to the lesion and push it through one of those phases of growth because the plaque is very dynamic and we've been able to pick apart some of the factors that control the generation of leukocytes that can contribute to the mayhem in the plaque. So uh, I'm very uh, grateful that Novartis listened to me uh, and that we were able to get this study off the ground. And uh, this is the uh, design paper uh, for the CANTOS trial. And we targeted uh, inflammation with a monoclonal antibody that neutralizes IL-1 beta. And Christy, you will remember, I think we were somewhere in the, somewhere north of Miami Aventura or something, when we had critical meetings because we had to actually add a dose to the study uh, after the study began because the FDA wanted a, a, a no effect dose. Uh, we disappointed them in that regard. Uh, so what you can see here is the three doses of, uh, of the antibody had a nice lowering of C-reactive protein measured with a high sensitivity assay, our index, our biomarker of inflammation, but no changes in atherogenic lipoproteins. So we knew, we knew that the statins, which can both have lipid-lowering independent anti-inflammatory effects and lower lipids, uh, when, when we did statistical games, uh, we could show that maybe half of the benefit of statins in certain circumstances would do to an anti-inflammatory effect, independent of LDL lowering, but you could never rigorously deconvolute inflammation from lipid lowering with the statins, and here we did that. So we had a very clean experiment to test the inflammation hypothesis. This is the top-line result of the CANTOS trial. I've heard this described as a modest effect. Well, it's 15 percent, which is exactly numerically what was seen in Odyssey outcomes and in Fourier with the PCSK9 inhibitors. So if this is a modest effect, so are the effects on LDL in statin-treated patients with PCSK9 antibodies. So we took a look in Cantos at uh, what drives those results in a population where statins don't seem to, to uh, really be able to make as much headway is in people without statins. Now, please don't stop your statins in your CKD patients because of this. But, um, so what we did is we, we looked at the bulk of the patients in Cantos who had okay renal function, about 8,000, and then we looked at the almost 1,100 people who had CKD. And we asked the question, what is driving recurrent events? Uh, remember that these patients were selected for having inflammation and they were all on highly effective statin therapy. Our uh, baseline LDL in this study 
uh, we took great, uh, great pains to get the LDL really low because we knew the study was going to be uh, widely criticized. And our baseline LDL was about 10 points lower than in Fourier in an Odyssey outcome. So we had really good statin treatment. And these patients were selected for having some ambient inflammation. And lo and behold, what you can see here is that your C-reactive protein, your index of inflammation, correlates with, with recurrent events with a hazard ratio of about 1.5. But if we do the same exercise with LDL, it's flat. Uh, so it looks like what's driving those events in patients with CKD who are already on statins is more likely to be inflammation than driving their LDL into the sub-basement.